just sustain the objection in your case. So if you follow the law, okay, you will realize that it is no railroad job, defended me. No, it's a railroad job, I'm telling the white folks. Uh, I have some other things. I'll just read this last uh, uh, comedy cross-examination. I call this comedy cross-examination. Uh, are you the owner of this establishment? This is in Mukhtar. Yes, I am. Everything you told me is true. Yes, it is. I wouldn't lie to the police. I wouldn't lie to the jury. I'm the owner of this property. Just a minute. Did I show you all the, the deed a minute ago? Well, just let me show you the deed. I'll let everybody go in just a second. But believe me, I got the deed right here as soon as I can find it. Just want you to see it so you know I'm telling the truth. Uh, well, I'll have to find it in a minute. Don't worry, I got it. So, yes, I am. Everything you told me is true. Yes, it is. I wouldn't lie to the police. I wouldn't lie to the jury. I'm the owner of this establishment. Then it goes on to say, we're skipping. He lied to you. He lied to all of us. He's not the owner. And when the district attorney asked him, why did you say that? I don't know. The nigga sitting there, I don't know why I said that. I don't really know why I said that. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. I shouldn't lie. And definitely not to the police. I'm telling you, you can get a copy. This is what the nigga is saying. Why do you think I don't respond to all of this stuff? Why do you think it's hilarious? When I go to, in the court in Oakland, when I go to Oakland, I start laughing as soon as I cross the city limits. I'm, says Oakland, I start laughing. Because this stuff is hilarious. I want everybody to understand, if I didn't handle it like that, I would be a dead man. Because there's other things that the Negroes then said, this man just got here from D.C. and he got two shotguns in there. And on and on. Right? Okay, let's see what we're going to, I wouldn't lie to the jury. He lied to you, he lied to all of us. He's not the owner. And when the district attorney asked him, why did you say that, I don't know. I don't really know why I said that. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, you shouldn't lie, and definitely not to the police. But we know why he did it. We know that the years of buildup had come to this point. He finally wanted to put the nail in the coffin and get him charged, me. I'm the owner. He's trespassing and it worked. The police bought it. All these arrests, now, four of them are before when I got beat the case. Four of them are after. Is this double? They, they have double jeopardy laws or something? They charged me. I still got a charge. They given me, I'm going to sue them for uh, $100 million. That's what I'm going to do. If I get it, I don't. If I, that, that doesn't make me any difference. I'm suing them. And I got three stacks. You know, I, I, you know where you order the, 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 the trial stuff? I ordered it all. I, got, I just copied the stuff from it. I got it all. And I got another, I'm going to court now out there on the same charge, trespassing. Okay. So what I'm doing 
is I'm getting just like we got all this testimony. We'll get more testimony. You see? Okay. Then when we sue them and go through the real court thing that we're going to bring, they got the number one, they've lied, and they've already halfway lied in number two. So by the time they finish, they're going to have all that packed in there. And guess what? I haven't said nothing to no court, hardly. So I just, they can't say anything because they done already lied twice. And we got it on paper. We can't lose the case. We can't lose the case. And we're not going to stumble in there and let the police uh, shoot us down. Remember, I got other stuff say that that man came here, he got two shotguns, he just came from D.C., and da-da-da-da-da, right? I think I might have read some of those to y'all before. Yeah, yeah, okay, here's the point. This is the now climbing up the mountain to success. Our brothers, if we can collect and cooperate and build the true story of what's happened for and about black people in America, we changed the narrative of the last 50 years. You gotta understand, we changed the narrative of the last 50 or more years. That's what I'm gonna do even if something happened and just that one get out of the one yesterday. day. Or somebody stumbled into the paperwork, it doesn't make a difference. That's what we're headed for. That's why we've been sitting here crueling it down and researching. See, to understand what happened, the white man just got his ass whipped in the court for this dumb stuff with Donald Trump. Uh, this is the first Negro ass whooping the white man ever got, what we did. Yes, we didn't whoop this behind. Excuse the language there, people. But this is not all an Islamic program. This is a black, uh, whatever the month is. Right? You can see, we didn't whip boss man. Boss man is whipped. There ain't nothing he can do. If he give me $100 million, fine. If he don't, it doesn't make any difference. We're going to raise money to help the people protect themselves against America falling on them. America is falling right now. Our job is to show them where to move till you got time to get yourself together. Boss man is falling over there. We haven't been wrong. We haven't been wrong. Have we ever been wrong about the, have not been wrong. In fact, we have been right in detail. That's what, it, that's what it's all about. You can't just jump up and be right. You have to be able to wait a long time. And we've been waiting on boss man. And we always wanted to help black people. When I came back to America in 1970 something, 73, 74, it wasn't because we quit the fight. We had to think, well, what the hell are we gonna do now? Everybody that left Algeria, Everybody where they are, the rebellion is finished. It's finished for them, it ain't finished for me. That's the way I'm thinking. Oh, uh-uh. No, boss man ain't getting away with nothing. What do we do? We have a period, remember we called it the wandering in the wilderness. It's not wandering in the wilderness. It's trying to figure out what will you do. So if you revisit the nation, if you hang with the chief, whatever you're doing, you're studying, what are we going to do? You know, mainly, what am I gonna do? Other people wasn't thinking back that, like that. The, the revolution is over, finished. We're going home and get some rest. And we don't wanna make the white man any madder than he already is. That's not our program. Our program is just what you see. You ain't nothing but a bunch of punks. You're just a punk. 
keep talking about it, mess with me. I'm a nigga. That's basically what it is. It's talking nigga trash. Yeah, I'll slap you upside your head, peck of wood. Yeah, mess with me. Come on. Right? That's what it is. You can see that's what it says. Repunk the FBI. And we didn't choose somebody that don't nobody know who they're talking to. I'll close with this. We've been doing this struggle a long time. You have to trust in Allah, and you have to depend on Allah. Allah will show you what you got to, to win the battle. You, can't, you don't go out there with what he got these physical weapons, we're going to have a shootout with the white man. And the white man got 50,000 weapons. And guess what? The white man then trained. Did the Negro train? Look at how many Negroes got shot. How you get shot? Well, I barely got away, but the white man, I hit him, and he fell down, and he rolled over, and bam. Remember those days when the police would get hit? He'd roll over and shoot the nigga and kill him. You know how many niggas we lost like that? Because the white man been taught. He ain't tougher than you. He ain't even as smart as you. But they train him. Look, I told the Negroes across the street they was arguing with the, the police and stuff. I told them, these are trained bitches, police. That's what I told them. And there was some black police there. They had their arms folded like uh, we don't hear nothing. Whatever he's saying is fine. Because some of the people on the police department recognize what we're trying to do. Yeah, and, and they black. So we was telling the brothers over there, because they ready to get riled up. I said, the police, they bitches, but they train bitches. They train bitches. You know, don't throw your life away. Them bitches is trained. They'll shoot you and they get a ward on their, on their shirt for shooting you. Right? We did that at everything. You got to admit, we whooped the white man on every turn. He did nothing to us at all, nothing. On the Islamic move, trying to trap us, on trying to set us up here, on having 50,000 Negroes, uh, you know, waking you up and putting you to sleep. Yeah, what, so what? For so what? I'm telling you, if you follow a lie and a sunnah, you're going to be helped. That's what we want. Uh, Brother Sekou, Sekou is a kind of a Muslim. But he don't want to spend a whole lot of time with me. It's just the way I'm thinking, because it might, I don't know. But we got to get him back on the team. Lynchpin. I figure between uh, uh, Pete O'Neill, Sekou Dinga, and myself, we'll cover the whole spectrum. Because each one had a special Sekou had his own type of backbone and courage. You know the New Jersey Turnpike? Shoot, they took that, uh, they took that girl out of there and, and took her on to Cuba, right? <laughs> How many niggas hit them cars, armored cars, police caravan, and take people out and go on about their business? They don't do that. That's not normal. And they did it. They did it. See, we got niggas that did all that stuff you see on TV. We already got the people that have done it. And they wasn't, uh, when you see them, they just regular brothers. You know, 
they didn't have no big badge that said uh, I did this to the police, we did that. that no. All of them are common brothers. Pete O'Neill, that whole school, that, to stick with that stuff for 50 years? That's not bad. I mean, that stuff, educating children. They used to call it the Malcolm X Cultural Center or something like that. I think they changed it in the last few days. I saw a thing from Pete in 83. <laughs> I think that's when he gave up his, uh, his citizenship because uh, he said, I don't know, I hear that people are wearing curly cues or something. You know where niggas, they, they was wearing jerry curls and stuff. And then he said, because uh, niggas would, you know the way s the ladies tie up their hair with, uh, used to be, not cardboard, but, but uh, the paper bag stuff. 